so we were not ready, so we're gonna go. Hi guys, good morning. My name is Ada Arviso, and this morning we have two girls that I love, and this is why I wanted to start this month with the Yes Show with them. They are inspiring to me, and each time I go to their Facebook, it's I'm inspired. Now, give us your names, because I'll keep <laughs> saying something. <laughs> My name is Deidre Steele. I'm Danielle McLaughlin. Okay, now I want to ask you girls to start off. You guys are amazing. Have you guys always, and I know this is off the, the thing, but do you guys feel like you've always been the type of girls that each time you've, you've seen something that you want, you go for it? Yeah. Yes. You visualize I, yourself. <laughs> I knew sometimes that even gets me in situations where I'm like, oh, okay, backtrack just a little. And even Deidre's more of the voice of reason. She's like, uh, probably I, should have prayed about that first. <laughs> but I, I thought mean, I so. wanted it. <laughs> really? That's when we balance each other out pretty good, I think. But That's good. I think more often than not, I don't go for, you know, the things I want right away until I absolutely feel like, you know, it has to be like the Lord pressing me out there. Yeah moving me forward because in my own strength or my own, you know, personality, it would take me years <laughs> to, to really? do what I feel. Oh, yeah. Wow. I'm thankful that uh, the Lord pushes me because, <laughs> or my sister. My sister is good at pushing. <laughs> I, it's a good thing, yeah. yeah. God and my sister. Yeah. It yeah. <laughs> works out just yeah. fine. <laughs> That's I'm funny. Sure. Now, let me ask you something. Um, you know, I've known you girls since you guys were a lot younger, mm -hmm. and you guys, to me, are just the perfect sisters, you can say. Like, to me, what I see is like you guys, like what you said, you balance each other out really well. Um, tell me about you growing up. Was there something that you could remember that you can say, you know, right now I can sit back, I have that memory, and because of that, here, here is the reason why I am the way I am today. Do you remember anything like that? Well, besides fighting, I'm just kidding. Besides we fighting, we totally definitely normal. fought a lot. Yeah. Really? Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> we definitely had our moments. I I'm sure we have friends out there that could say, oh yeah, I was there. I was there for that fight. I remember that. Wow. But you know what? It, I think that was just part of you know the process. Oh, yeah. Now she's my best friend. We still have our moments where we disagree. Yeah. <laughs> but we have to work it out. It, it works out. But as far as you, like our, our childhood or growing up, just our parents and everything? Mm -hmm. or Yeah, like your parents. I, I remember that I was speaking to your mom once and she's amazing. Cindy's just amazing. And I remember that she was saying something like, I remember when they didn't want to continue this and I told them you need to dress up and go. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is that true? No, it's really true. I feel like uh, she never let us quit mm -hmm. anything, which, you know, obviously formed and shaped us to who we are today. Because I even have, I've carried that throughout my entire life. That anything we start, that we're going to finish it. Okay. Even when we feel like, you know, the time is closing and it's, you know, we're about to move on to something else. You still, you start it and you finish it the best that you can. That's amazing. I mean, there, yeah, there were times where it was dance when we were like, I don't feel like we to dance today. She's you're gonna go because you started this. And so she told me you wanted to do. And we both were able to move away and dance yeah. and you know, we got to be able, you know. Definitely thankful for that, for that push. Yeah. And I think too, uh, with my mom, I mean both of my parents, but I, I know especially my mom growing up, if 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 I had an issue with another person or one of my friends or I you know, I felt like like my feelings were hurt, my mom would was never not that she wasn't ever on our side, she was always on our side, but she would it was always well, what did you do? What did you do to them? Did you say something to them? Did you hurt their feelings that they lashed out on you? You know, so I, I used to get so upset at that. But as an adult, I appreciate that because it changes your view. Um, it on, you. Yeah, it, it changes the way you view situations and conflict because, like, okay, you you need to you need to kind of you search yourself. Own, yeah. Search yourself first. Did I did I offend that person? What did I say? Like, did I? You know what That's I mean? Tough. And it, it makes you love people differently and it makes you view situations differently. Yeah. So I am very thankful for that. My mom still does that to this yep. day, even as adults. But I'm Like, I swear I didn't do anything like, It wasn't my fault. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> but that's good because nowadays I think that what a lot of parents tend to do is just react and 
say, oh, what happened? Let me start something else. Yeah. I'll finish this. And it yeah. doesn't really finish. It just starts something else that it's different in the kids too. Yeah. It, yeah. I feel that that enables them yeah. and they don't really figure out that other type of love, how to love people differently, yeah. how to really check yourself out before yes. anything. So I think that's really amazing. She's um, uh, she's you know when I look at her, she's always so happy. She's always so she happy. Is. And sometimes I wonder because I look at her and I say, this woman was married to an entrepreneur. I mean, the man is amazing. Your father is truly amazing. <laughs> and then to have daughters that are the way us, the viewers, we see you. And I know you guys are so humble, guys. If you don't know them, they're so humble. They don't really view themselves the way we see them. Um, I believe you guys are amazing. You're a great example to young women of your age and even older, oh, like me, I'm probably like 15 years older. But we won't go there. But, <laughs> but I think that um, there's something in you that in a way it's kind of cool that you don't know that you have because the world sees it and you shine in a way that you don't see it but you're still how should I say this? You're still sharing more of you and people are just like, what else, what else? We do, we all wanna see what else is happening off of this. Like we'll see a post and we're like, okay, what else is coming? Aww. We know, once you, you set your mind, we know that you girls are about to shake something. <laughs> now, talking about that, I know that there has been a dream and a vision in your life of something. Do you wanna share a little bit of that? What is it? <laughs> sure. Well, we've, I guess I've had this kind of dream for years, but I've always wanted, um, you know, just my own type dance ministry. Um, I just, I love working with young girls. I, I, I'm, I'm better with kind of, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, just a small group. So I feel like the Lord is, has um, just put us in a situation to work with girls. We, we both teach dance classes. I love it. Um, and it's been an opportunity to teach you know, more than ballet. It's not just about the ballet. It's more of just the tool that, that has been put in our hand to minister to girls and to give them. Um, I think what we've noticed um, just with a certain age is there's a there's a lack of confidence. There's a lack of yes. maybe security sometimes. And um, I don't even know if maybe they realize it at the time, but it's, it's something that maybe the Lord has opened our eyes to. And um, I don't know. I just even even getting to be with them, getting to spend time with them, getting to um, tell them good job every now and then. You know, I feel like that place is a different type of confidence that they maybe didn't have before. Mm -hmm. So, the vision the Lord has given us is um, a, as just a small group. Um, we have a we have a company called Freedom Performing Arts Company that's happening right now, and um, we perform around the community. Um, we're mostly a ballet and contemporary company. Um, all of our music is is you know either instrumental you know classic classic ballet, um, but our, our heart is really worship music and even just um, to be aware of the words of the songs and the attitude of the song and the way we're dancing because you know there's there's a lot of different types of styles out there and not that we, we trained in all of it growing up and yeah. we loved it it was yeah. super fun I don't I don't regret any of my training but I think now our heart is more toward just the worship aspect of it and just. Um, allowing the Lord to teach us how to really use this for His glory and Absolutely. for His purpose. And um, the purpose that He's given these girls, it's really our heart to kind of show them maybe what that is and, and who they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So we're excited about that. And it makes a big difference, that presence that you bring, because I remember, um, and it's funny because as you're saying this, I'm remembering when I was teaching classes like spinning and Zumba, I would add in there, Christian music. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it was, you know, it was spinning music, but it was Christian. And sometimes it was Zumba, like a merengue or salsa, but it was Christian. Yeah. yeah. And so once in a while, I would hear, um, "There's something about your class. There's something about your class," but they couldn't put it into words. And never. And this is what I see in you, in you girls. And I love that about you, that you never say it's because of me. <laughs> It's you know, not. <laughs> it's not. It's definitely not. It's not because what happens, you can practice, practice, and practice, I'm sure, and then whatever happens out there is a whole different story. Yeah. Many oh, yeah. times.
have you have you noticed that when when did you notice that or what have you felt just give me an example like when did you practice so much and all of a sudden you're like wow that was not me well I think I mean we just recently had a show mm -hmm. and it's cool because you you get the girls together and we we obviously we want them you know to be together and we want them to dance together and it to be nice and rehearsed and clean and you want to put it on stage to where it's just beautiful and, and the girls get that, you know, they're like, they're ready. And I think this last performance, when they got on stage and they danced, they, they felt something different. And we all did. And obviously that's, that's the Holy Spirit showing up and taking over because we've told him multiple times, you know, this is your company. We want you to do with it what you see fit. Mm -hmm. So when we step out on that stage, whoever needs to be ministered to, you know, even the girls, but not only the girls, the audience, whoever it that needs to hear whatever they need to hear, do it and use us in any way that you can. So I think we all left that performance that night thinking, whoa, like the Lord showed up in a way that, you know, we didn't even expect, you know, mm -hmm. so that, that is super, super cool coming from, you know, we've performed our entire lives, you know, and it's been fun and we've loved it and it, it's been so enjoyable, but to hear things at performances like this and people are like, wow, the Lord really touched my heart or I needed to hear that. And it's like, oh, that wasn't us. You know, mm -hmm. it's so cool to see him do that to be a part of something like that. Yeah. Now, you're saying that you've been performing all of your lives. Mm -hmm. Now, when did you start dancing? And after high school, what happened? Where did you go? What did you do? Well, <laughs> we both started dancing here in Yuma like at, at a two. studio. Yeah, we were, I think I was really three little. or four. Danielle was two or three. <laughs> um, we, we trained here here in town, had a, had a really great experience. Um, we, we performed around Yuma, we went to competitions, we did conventions, mm -hmm. um, all kinds of stuff, you know. Um, we did summer intensives. Um, then after, after I graduated, I actually went away to um, a company called Ballet Magnificat, and it was in Jackson, Mississippi. I went and trained there, I was a trainee there for a year, and then I toured with the Omega Company for four years. And that was, that changed my life. It really what did change that? my life. Um, How did it change your life? You know, it was it was a lot of dancing, a lot of training, intense training. But more importantly, I learned why I was doing it. Yeah. You know, um, we had it, it's a faith based ministry. It's, it's a ministry, full time ministry. Um, you have Bible studies while you were there. You did anatomy classes. You know, you name it. We we had all kinds of vocabulary uh, tests of the French words of ballet, which I never never. <laughs> Still probably couldn't do it. I really tried hard on the test, but I probably couldn't do it again. But um, we, we, with the company, we toured uh, nationally and internationally. Um, I did European tours, you know, to the point where you're performing, sometimes you're performing on a grand, uh, massive, amazing, amazing stage with thousands of people. Sometimes it was 100 people in, you know, on a tile floor in Italy and you're ministering to women and children who have never heard this message before. Wow. You know, so I That's think amazing. that is what kind of changed my life. You learn hard work. Sometimes you'd had three performances in a day. You had a travel day. Um, it stretches you and molds you and yeah. shapes you. You cry a lot. You laugh a lot. And you really learn to rely on the Lord. And I wouldn't trade that for the world. And I think that has shaped a lot of our vision mm -hmm. and a lot of the leadership that I had there really ministered to my life and um, helped me see kind of what I wanted to do, you know? So. Yeah. And then, uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I, I went there too, actually, mm -hmm. out of high school. I went to Mississippi. She was there a year before me, and then I ended up going there for three years, and we got to live together and um, be a part of that ministry together, which was super, super cool. And then um, after I left Ballet Magnificat, I ended up joining a ministry called the Silver Ring Thing. Mm -hmm. And the Silver Ring Thing is 13 people. It's normally, you know, six girls, seven guys, tour the country for eight months out of the year and talk about, you know, waiting until, waiting to have sex until marriage. And it's actually how I met my husband. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle and I got to tour together, which, I mean, just like Deidre was saying, tour is life-changing. It stretches you and it's exhausting, but super rewarding at the same time. And um, I don't know, it, it, it teaches you something that you really, it's hard to learn that in any other situation. Yeah. You know, so we're thankful for our years on the road. <laughs> now, do you feel that the fact that your mom and your dad taught you that discipline from the beginning, that helped? 
Yes, absolutely. And you know what? I think as Deidre was talking about dancing growing up, that that definitely teaches you discipline too. Oh yeah. You know, and and you have goals, and you want to improve, and you want to, you know, you know that you want to maybe do this after high school. Well, you you've got to do your best, you know, and be there every night until nine thirty if you have to be. And, and my mom telling us we had to go <laughs> had a big part in that. You know, once we got there, we were always fine. But I feel like that. So, you know, instill a lot of discipline in us. And we see that in our young girls, too. And, Definitely. you know, we tell the parents, like, keep them here. This is going to teach Good. them and this is going to grow them and they're going to carry this for the rest of their lives. And I agree with that because I think that um, our generation and your generation is also getting to the point where I think we feel that our parents were too harsh on us. So we try to be a little softer on our kids and in reality I feel that that enables the kids it doesn't really teach them true leadership and true discipline and it's hard because it's our babies looking at us oh, like yeah. no please yeah. and I'm sure our parents like your mom she probably like I have <laughs> gone to the bathroom and cried and wondered am I doing the right thing they just oh, look yeah. at me sure. like please no <laughs> but at the same time it's almost like I wipe my face I'm like okay so they I know the world is going to be harder on them. A boss is going to be harder on them. Yes. Yeah. They're not going to love on them the way I do. Absolutely. So, and it's hard though at the same time because sometimes you question yourself, should I be the soft one because the world is going to be so hard. Yeah. But at the same time, it's good to be a Cindy, you know, to be a Todd <laughs> and say, I'm sorry, you signed up, you got to go. Yeah. And I feel that's how we are with um, Aiden. He just started football this year, and he's my baby. <laughs> he's my baby. Football. I know. Yeah. He, it is football. And I'm like, ah, he still has all these years. It's fine. But I have to kind of go back and say, okay, we got to listen to Daddy because Daddy knows what he's saying, even though I'm like, why are you so harsh on him? But, but um, you know, when you forward all of that, we see leadership, like we have seen in you guys. We see that hunger to achieve that dream and that vision. Not a lot of people have that today. I think we're getting to a point where it's, I get to it when I get to it. And I think if we can just mold those habits and kind of discipline ourselves, we'll get farther. Yeah. I think, you know, I've been thinking about this a lot too. This might even be a little bit off topic, but go for it. I feel like <laughs> Todd, my dad, who I call him Todd in the office and he's my boss now. <laughs> Mr. Boss. <laughs> We've been talking about this yeah. a lot. And he actually did a video about it, but it's it's making the most out of every situation that you're in too and not resenting any situation that you're in, you know, because every situation is what leads you to the next, you know, and when you do your right. best, in these situations, you know, I mean, being faithful in the small things, if you will, mm -hmm. then the Lord is going to open a door to mm -hmm. something bigger. And then it just, you know, keeps going from there. And I feel like sometimes I know, I know with the millennials, I know with our generation, we're very impatient and we see like, we want to jump from one step to the next, you know? And it's like, sometimes it takes, it's a road and it's a journey getting there, but you make the most of every beautiful situation. You know, mm -hmm. you might, and our parents always told us that too, enjoy every season. Because you're not going to get that season again. Mm -hmm. And you're going to learn from every season. If you're a server, that's my dad told me that. I waited tables at Chili's for three years. You better be the best server they've ever seen at Chili's. <laughs> okay, dad, I will. You know, and I loved it. And I feel like, you know, every situation that you get yourself, that you're in, you got to make the most of it and do your best there. And then when you know that time is coming to an end, still finish. You know, you want to leave the situation thinking, did I do my best? Because people will bless you on the way out too if they know that you gave it your all and it's going to be a beautiful ending into the next transition. I love that. So um, that is something I've been thinking about a lot too and that, I feel like that's, you know, I, it pertains here as far as, you know, leadership and, and wanting to grow and get better and to improve, you know. Now I know that you girls um, both work. Your mother to be. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> she doesn't even look like she. Yeah. No, I forgot. She came in and I completely forgot until I said, oh, wait. <laughs> there was a post there. there four months. <laughs> There's nothing. There's like, her body's still amazing. Oh, jeez. But um, how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself um, 
right now. I mean, it's there's a journey to come, and things will happen. Um, but do you see yourself being much like your parents? as a parent. <laughs> you know it's funny. I, I really do. I do see Good. myself being that way. Because even in the when I teach, you know, our, our girls and I always ask teachers, I'm like, was I a little too harsh or was I a little you know, but I, I do I do find myself having a lot of my mom in me too, you know, and um, my dad was always he, he pushed us but he was always the soft one. We knew it was mom and we <laughs> like, okay, well you wanna ask mom, you ask mom. Okay, you ask mom. So that I, happens here. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I do feel like I'll have a lot of you know her and me. At least I hope so. I think I, I respect her and I think she's awesome and I hope that I could be the mom that she was for us. But I got I I, I hope I don't really know until like, you get there. And, right. You know I'm learning with Deidre too and I see Deidre as a mom and you know she's awesome and I see a lot of my mom in Deidre as a mom. <laughs> and we actually thought Stevie was going to be the hard one, you know, the discipline, but. He's kind of a little bit more of a softy and DJ is more <laughs> disciplinary. How do you, how do you, you have a two year old, right? Almost two. Almost two, mm -hmm. yeah. Almost two, and it's a boy. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> he's so handsome. Oh gosh. He's Thank so you. handsome. But how do you, how, how do you see yourself as a mom? Are you like your mom or do you, have you changed anything? Have you, I don't know. How you are know, you? I, I have no idea. <laughs> I do see a little bit of my mom, yeah. Um, Which is a good thing. Yeah. Just saying. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> it is, it is. Mm -hmm. um, my son is nothing like me. Which it's, it's amazing. Like They challenge me. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's busy. He's, he's hyper. He's fun. He, he's awesome. But he is... Busy, busy. She and the, I would just want to. She got the kit my mom always said I was going to get because I yes. deserved it because I was the crazy one. I just wasn't like that. I just want to, you know, like, can we just sit down and chill? You know, he, he never wants to do that. <laughs> so no I'm time learning. for that, mom. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely learning on, you know, what to discipline, when to be hard on him, and like, you can't throw fits for no reason. I know you're only two, but you can't do that. And kind of, you know, well, he just wants to, you know, letting some things go. He's fun. He wants to be busy. He wants mm -hmm. to play sports outside. I need to be more open to that, you know, and mm -hmm. embracing, you know, who he is, but so I'm definitely it's learning, yeah, it's a, I'm trying it's a to figure thing. that out, balance that out. Yeah. It's a learning thing. Um, I remember, <laughs> I did this to both my kids, I remember they both threw a temper tantrum at Walmart, and it was when they each were two, for some reason. I think it's safe. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I walked away about maybe eight feet um, down that aisle for each of them, and it was, for some reason, it was around winter season where we have so guests many people <laughs> in Walmart. Yeah. So I walked away and I, I remember saying, where's your parent? <laughs> Are they here? Where's your mom? But they couldn't really speak, speak yet. <laughs> so they gave me a confusing oh look like, who are you talking to? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. There's I, so many people passing by. Where, where's her mom? Where, I don't know. <laughs> Can weird. we call for their parents? I don't know. <laughs> I remember learning oh. sign language just to yell at Giselle oh. at the store it's and good, correct yeah. her, like yeah, without idea. people knowing. Yeah, I mean, you know. you but there's so much you can do because <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody knows, you know. But yeah, it's honestly, I do wish they came with a manual. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh gosh. for every personality, I do wish they did because they they test you and then they test you eight hundred more times, <laughs> and within five minutes. I, I'm sure, yeah. yeah. So um, I want to ask you something. You work with a lot of girls that are from different ages. What ages are they normally? Oh man, yeah. start at ten and younger than that. I actually teach from six. Most of us, you teach even younger. Yeah, I teach five. Five-year-olds mm -hmm. to about you know high school to high school age. In our in our uh, company right now, I'd say the youngest is eight. Mm -hmm. Eight. And the yeah. oldest is sixteen. Okay. Yeah. Do you see that these girls go through certain struggles, and are they almost the same struggles? You know, because I feel like whenever I speak to my daughter, I'm like, well, when. Your daddy and I met, there wasn't Facebook. And she's like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, if there wasn't probably even the internet. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. She's like, how old are you? Yeah. But, you know, this generation is different. Um, this generation is 
very involved in social media, very involved in how a girl should look like, should feel like. Everything is a you should, you should, you should. Yeah. Do you feel that you see that in your world in when you're teaching these girls? <laughs> you, are there you know, struggles that they go through that I, I we don't do. see? I think that we are very lucky. Um, I think in a in a like dance studio setting, um, they're they're there they're there to be just you know they're 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 prepared for um, what's to come I guess if that makes sense like they're 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 wanting to train they're wanting to learn they're wanting to to be dancers so the 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 discipline is kind of there you know it's, I think it'd be a lot different if we were working in like a school or um, a, a different kind of public setting um, but definitely I think getting the privilege to work with, you know, mostly, it, I mean, I, I only teach a few of the boys, you know, in this, in our, in our company, but um, dealing with mostly girls, I think a lot of it is maybe the insecurity, you know, and just kind of like what we were saying earlier, um, it's, I think the age is a tough age, and, and especially, I can only imagine with, you know, I was, I was a little shyer growing up, and I, I had a different, my personality was a little different, and I had always wished that maybe I could speak out more, say what I say what I was feeling more because I had strong feelings, I had strong opinions, but mm -hmm. it was hard for me to speak them out. And I think had I had social media, had I had Facebook, and you have those opportunities to kind of speak out behind the scenes, I think it's a little yeah. more dangerous because it's not behind the scenes at all. It's very loud and it's very you know you're you're putting it out there for people to put you down or people to come against you and and. I think there's a lot more um, backbiting, a lot more gossip, a lot more. Um, I don't know. You're even you're putting these selfies out there, and you're you, you know allowing people to comment you are not pretty, or you know what I mean. Yeah, like, who knows? Judge I, you and I just I can't you. imagine what that does to a girl's self-esteem and their confidence. Yeah. And I think you really in in this day and age, you really have to know who you are. And I think that is what we're fighting to tell these girls, you know? And I think too, I mean, finding, knowing their self-worth is something that we, we yes. always talk about. And that's, um, our last show going back to that was all on that topic, you know, follow the story of a girl that lost track of who she was and her worth and ultimately coming back, you know, the Lord told her, you know, you're loved, you're beautiful. You know, I have created you to be who you are supposed to be. And I think you're perfect, you know? So it's like finding your worth and, knowing you know knowing who you are basically and and that comes from knowing who you are in the lord and who he has called you to be but i i have seen that you know i see that in, in these these young kids who post the selfies like teacher was saying find their worth in every like or comment and if the likes don't come and if the comments don't come it, it's a fail Mm -hmm. You know, and it's not, that's such a lie, it's such a lie, you know, these girls are, are gorgeous, mm -hmm. you know, like they don't have to, they don't have to rely on what other people think of them, and we all struggle with that, every age struggles with that, but I feel like it's, it's really blasted out there on social media, and puts it out there for you to struggle with it, yeah. you know, so, I agree with that. but our, our, within our company, we have some great parents, mm -hmm. and I'm thankful yeah. for the parents. And the parents are very open and honest with their girls, and and the like, girls too. I'm I'm thankful for their hearts. Yes, and, for, and, and even you know just the change we've seen in some of them, you know, and how we've seen them grow. It's 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 they're gonna be this. They're gonna be okay, you know. And sometimes you think like these young girls, I'm like, oh, this social media, all of this stuff. How are they gonna be okay? They're gonna be okay, you know. And I feel like we just keep having it. We need to just keep telling them truth. You know, the Lord loves you. The Lord thinks you're perfect. This is where your worth comes from, and you don't have to, you know, give a guy anything before you're not ready. Exactly. You yeah. know, you don't have to listen to what these girls are saying about you. Mm -hmm. So just instilling that in them and making sure that they know, you know, we're proud of them and we think they're beautiful. And we love them. So, do you feel that if um, us as parents, if we filled their morning, let's say, if we made it a challenge or a journey or whatever you would want to call it, to start their day with affirmations, that would help in their day. Do you feel that helps, like more 
of us parents. Like I have a 12 year old little girl yeah. and well she's, I say little but she's much taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> Not very tall anyway. But um, I don't know, it's, I, I, I believe about, I don't know how many months ago so I don't want to say because I might lie. But a few months ago, um, just something came to my heart and I started saying I should start her day with affirmations. Yeah. One day I won't be here and she needs to learn how to wake up believing that in herself, you know. One day I won't be there and the world might say something and she needs to remember the first thing she heard in the morning. Yeah. Do you feel that that would make a difference in our girls? I do. I think my my dad used to drive me to school and I remember seventh grade and he he would stare at me and I'd be like, Dad, don't stare at me. I'm not a morning person. But every morning he would he would read or he would recite because he had it memorized, Psalm one thirty nine. And if you've never read Psalm one thirty nine, read it. It's mine too now and I love it and I feel like I, and I'd get like, God just stop hugging, you know. But I, I carried it with me throughout my entire life, you know, the the Lord's thoughts of you outnumber the grains of sand. You know, he knit you together in your mother's womb. Like, he knows you and he formed you and he has a plan and a purpose for you. And you know, my dad just even telling me those things in the morning, I, I've carried that with me, you know, knowing that the Lord has good plans for me. See, that's amazing. So, did he do that with you also? Yeah, yeah. He, Would he stare at you? Yeah. Also, I think you were already driving by this time. Yeah, by that time I, was, I drove myself to school. But he did. He definitely he definitely did that to us. He was, or or I still have, you know, he would write us poems for Valentine's Day. and Aww. I don't think people know that he's really like that because he's not always like very, like, I mean, he's a gracious man, but he's not always like soft. You know, he's also opinionated. Yeah. He also has a lot of. And he's a hard I worker. Mean, he's a hard he worker, is. and, and he, he when he sets his mind to it, he's like bam. And whoever's in the way sometimes. <laughs> but you know what? He's gracious and he's funny, and I don't know. If, like, I'm so thankful for his heart and, and the way that the Lord, you know, put him together because he's sensitive to people's feelings, and and he was sensitive to what we needed at that time. Yeah. And I have poems of like, you know, like. Okay, you're, you're beautiful. And in like years where I was maybe feeling a little weird and a little like I didn't know what I was doing or who I was, you know, and he spoke some truth into my life when I needed it. So. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Now, you guys brought up something, and I told you guys sometimes the conversations just go elsewhere, but I do remember something very special that he taught us that we want to do with our daughter. Yeah. Is it true that he gave you a ring? Yes. <laughs> when was this? At what age? What? Tell us. I think I was 14, so you were probably almost 17. Yeah, I was older. Yeah, he had um, rings. Paul Benzel made rings for us, and on the inside it said, "This is my promise to you." And he said, "This is, you know, ultimately your promise to the Lord, but it's the promise that you've made to me and to your future spouse." And when we were when we got married, we gave them to our husbands. So, oh, wow. so you had that on every day as yeah. a teenager. Uh huh. Told us, you know, put these on, and as long as you wear these, you're gonna wait until your husband and on your wedding night, you'll give these to him. Wow. And we were both able to do that. May the grace of God. Yeah, <laughs> but, and, and, and I think too, you know, like whenever I think about a purity ring, I, I think some people think like, oh, you put a purity ring on, it's so perfect, you know? Okay, you're pure, you know. But I think, I think it's. It, all that all that purity reading was to me personally was a daily reminder Reminded. because it's hard, Absolutely. you know. Um, when you when you have a boyfriend or you know I had a boyfriend all through high school yeah. and I think now my I'm married to him. Yeah, well, but my daily <laughs> prayer, you know, not that anybody, not that we were perfect by any means, but like my daily prayer was okay, like Lord, you, this is through your strength that we're able to wait till we're married, or this is only yeah. by your grace that that you're you know keeping us out of situations that maybe not the healthiest. So I think it was, it, I would look, it was just like a, a reminder that those struggles were going to be worth it, you know, and yeah. it's not easy, but exactly. it's worth it. It's worth the wait. So yeah, and awesome. also coming back to, you know, I feel like our, our parents instilling this to us at a young age and going back to knowing your worth, you know, too, yeah. because we knew that we wanted to wait for something greater because we knew that, you know, we had been told, you know, that when you're married, that's what the Lord has, he saved this for that and it's going to be great and it's gonna be awesome and we we knew we wanted that you know so it's like any any guy that tried it was like you're not him <laughs> i'm sorry you're not him 
I don't think so. She was really good. She was like, no. No, I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. You're much more alike than you think. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. I think those She's are the words I told my husband when he first called yeah, me. Yeah. Oh my like, gosh. How no. Funny. You're not. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> ready. <laughs> he called me like, but no, no, no. Oh. <laughs> Love that. Long story short. You were <laughs> Yeah. He. You know what? It was his persistence that why we're here today. That's because, awesome. Good job, Edward. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because when we first met, he called by mistake. His call was it was transferred to mine. Or we worked in the same company, different cities. That's Long story awesome. short, he kept calling for two months, and for two months I kept saying, "No, you're crazy. Stop stalking me. No, <laughs> I, no, I, no. I was in that place where I thought I had it all together, and <laughs> I. It, the funny thing is, I knew that guy was coming that year, but I kept saying it wasn't him. I was like, wow. it's not you. It's Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, but he's coming in. It's not you. Move out of the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're getting in the way of the plan. You're getting in the way. And I don't see anything right now. He's not coming because you're here in the way. Oh, funny. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, it was funny. I, as when we're young, sometimes we get really hurt and we know this, you know, puppy love, whatever. Yeah. And um, a pastor came to me. He said, you are too young to be dealing with this. Really, you're... Life should be about giving your heart to God and living for God and, and getting to know who you are. In the meanwhile, what we call now a vision board, <laughs> in the meanwhile, get a little paper, write a list, yeah, right? Yeah. And um, I said, what am I doing with this list? And he said, I want you to write all the details, but I want you to be detailed because if you're not detailed, God is going to give you what you wrote. <laughs> and I said, oh, okay. <laughs> That's that's funny. Okay, I've never heard of this. Fun. It's yeah. But what, what if I change my mind? And this is not really what I'm into, <laughs> right? So funny thing is that I wrote a list, and it was probably about 14 things, to be honest with you. And every time I tell this to somebody, they laugh. But I said, okay, so um, I want him to be. It, this sounds bad, but I want him to be Latino. Um, I want him to have Asian eyes. <laughs> um, I want him to have green or blue eyes. Green. I want him to have full lips. <laughs> I want it, 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 this sounds very vain. He needs to be between five ten or six feet because my generation is already tiny. So my next generation needs to be a little taller. So when I first met him, I said, "Wait, how tall are you?" <laughs> he's, he's not lying. He's all, he's all six five. Five. He lied in his license too. Oh six my god! But <laughs> he said five ten. Does that matter? I said that matters. Yes. Okay, you made it. That matters. So check check. But, um, you know, it, and the list continued going on, but at the end I did say, if none of this covers any of that, what I need it to cover is he needs to love you before he loves me. There's nothing serious between us unless he loves you more. Yeah. And that was a letter to God. And um, when I first met him, I told him, hey, I'm a church girl, I do this, I do that, I do that, I'm very involved. And about yourself he's like not really I said okay goodbye <laughs> and I think it got serious later when yeah I really saw that he was he was really he gave his heart to God so I think. and that sounds weird to certain people but I think to a generation of us or to a group of us we understand yeah because the feelings is different the relationships different for sure you know now uh, I'm going to somewhat wrap it up <laughs> but I was going to ask you, and I wrote some questions down. Um, some of them are fun. But before we go into the fun questions, what's your vision right now? Like, with everything that you have going on, other than the baby. Yeah, <laughs> like, wow, a lot is changing. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. My vision right now, honestly, is, is uh, to put it in, in you know, just a, some sort of words, just to be faithful in, in anything I'm doing right now, to be yes. honest. Um, that's kind of where the Lord has re rerouted me to. I, I think sometimes my mind gets ahead of what reality is, you know, and, and I think that he's given me, you know, visionary, you know, visionary skills or that I that I, I, I have all these different visions that I that I see from my own life. And I feel like the Lord's really teaching me to just be still and be faithful where I'm at and 
he he opens the doors, you know, and just to be trusting him. Um, but I definitely, we definitely want to continue the dance ministry yeah, and just um, be involved with dance. I, I love I love teaching these these young girls, and I, I love dance. And it's not just about dance; it's about everything. It's, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think people think you just show up and that's it. You dance. Oh and no, it's more yeah, than that. It is. These yeah. girls are dedicated and awesome. <laughs> so. I gotta say that it's the same for me because if I start if I start to think too much into what's next right now, you know, I'm obviously becoming a mom in October. Oh my I goodness, in October? Yes. Where is that me? <laughs> I think my my mind would just and I've already, you know, overloaded my husband with questions and he's like, just it's gonna all happen. It's he's probably like like fall the way it's supposed to fall, you know. So I mean, just like DJ, you know, still doing my best, being you know my the best at Nova that I can be, you know, the best dance teacher, and you know, seeing freedom grow and not worrying too much about the future and knowing that the Lord has it under control because I'm a control freak and I want to tell God all the time that I've got this. Yeah, so much in common. Oh God, I've got this. <laughs> and he's like, no, I've got this. Like, oh good, because I really don't. So, <laughs> Just I, think, yeah. I, think, I think too to be present as a wife and a mom, you know, because yeah. I think, I think as like young girls, you think like, I just wanted to be married. I wanted to have babies. I wanted, you know, and then things start happening, you know, yeah. and, and then your, your, your passion or your, your, ministry even whatever you feel has has somehow taken front row seat you know mm -hmm. and that's kind of another thing the Lord's telling me just to be present be a mom be a wife and present, yeah. that's a that's a whole different ministry mm -hmm. being a mom I'm learning only only a year and a half that is a whole separate ministry it's a and whole different like mom's business yes yeah. parents I'm sorry I never gave you the credit that you deserve yeah. Yeah. you guys are awesome yeah. it's now that you see um I saw a post this morning, something about, it's in those days that you feel like you, what is it, your world is coming apart that you realize what your mom went through. Yes. And yeah, I've had those days where I've literally sat in the laundry room full of clothes and I have still the outside of the world to take care of. And I'm going, I can't do this. I just can't do this. Yeah. I just lay right here. Yeah. Yeah, just give me night cool. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Just like my half marathon. Here. Yeah, I'm just lay right here. <laughs> so but, I'm sure. Can you can know, only imagine. How do you do it? Because that was the question. I'm sorry, I have to reach her. But how do you do it? Because I know you're so humble, Libra. You're so humble. And I love that about you. You don't, you don't consider yourself an entrepreneur. And I consider both of you entrepreneurs. <laughs> Because, you know, anytime you have a vision and you go after it, anytime you're a mother, I feel like you are the one who is showing up each day. You may not get paid for that day, but you're showing up. You have a vision. Yeah. It's going to come, but you just got to plug in and be consistent each day. How do you do it as a wife, as a mom? As an entrepreneur, I'll call you that. <laughs> as an entrepreneur, um, how do you do it? Um, the grace of God. <laughs> no, a lot I of prayer. Yeah, a lot of prayer. Um, honestly, I have an awesome husband. I really do. Who is an awesome dad, and the Lord is really just just you know we're learning how to team up on on parenting, <laughs> and. Um, you know, whenever I'm not able to be with him, he's able to be with him. So that's that's been awesome. Um, but I don't know. I think I really think it's just like, you know, the Lord sustains. He gives you a vision, and He gives you what you need for that vision. And I yeah. really, even if it feels like it's like step by step, or that second, I'm like, okay, I really need, I really need to, you know, know what I'm doing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then He gives it right at that second. So I think it's just His sustaining power, His grace, and um, He just kind of strengthens my husband and I to kind of just, you know, move through open one, doors because more, more that's not my natural personality. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah have you guys ever failed at anything? Oh, yeah. If you have, what I'm have sure. you learned from it? <laughs> just like, oh, I, well. mean, I think a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, I don't know if you could even consider it failures because 
I feel like we all have those times where you could sit there and dwell on a failure or you could not have a pity party and just brush it off and move forward and keep trying, mm -hmm. you know? I feel like, I don't know, for myself, what I've learned from anything that I feel like has like failed, it's don't take too much time to sit there and feel sorry for yourself, yes. <laughs> but to pick it up and keep going, mm -hmm. you know, because there, there's, you don't have time to sit there and feel sorry for yourself and mm -hmm. act like everything's crumbling, you know, I, I feel like we all do that and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm guilty have those days but I feel like you have to just brush it off and keep going learn from it and just know and maybe it wasn't a failure maybe it was just the Lord saying it's not the right time mm -hmm. wait on me and it will be the right time soon now move forward and I'm gonna do it you know and that's hard for our personality yes because if I'm understanding you correctly we're a lot alike yeah. and I like to get there get there now close the book next thing let's yes, go absolutely and I don't uh, God has molded me into understanding that sometimes I do need to be still. Yeah. And oh, wait. for sure. And it's hard. Deidre helps me with that too. It's Deidre. hard. Yeah. Edward helps me with that. Yeah. <laughs> totally balanced. And you know what? My husband, <laughs> yeah, my husband is the same like way. That. Him and Deidre are a lot, have a lot of the same characters, which I think is awesome too. He's very much calm and a relaxed person. He's like, oh, let's just pray about it. You know, like, just, it's going to be fine. And I'm like, are you sure? Like, you're right. It's going to be fun. What do you mean, Brit? You know, so, like, <laughs> I, you know, the Lord gives you exactly to you as far as, you know, people in your life, too, yeah, that are sure. going to help you grow and learn. Balance you. Now, if you can say, I'm going to do these uh, little quick questions, and I know it's hard to answer them in 20 or 30 seconds, and I, if Brian Buffini, if you're watching this, which I doubt that you are, but if you are, I kind of copied these from you, so... Mm -hmm. um, they're not my questions, but I thought they were fun to ask. Um, what's the best piece of advice you've ever gotten? I feel like it's just what I said earlier. It's uh, do your best in every situation that you're in. Give it your all, 100%. In anything that you, any situation that you put yourself into, do your best. How about you? I'd say finish strong. Yeah. I love that. I use, I oh think. my gosh, I forgot Dad said that. I, I love finish that. Strong. Yeah. yeah. You know, you use it even at, even in dance, you know, okay, now finish your movement strong, but I always think, like, gosh, there's such a deep meaning, meaning to that, you know? Yeah, finish strong. I love that. that. If there were anything else you could do, what would it be? <laughs> I don't really know, actually. You know, it's kind of, I, I don't know, I can think about that sometimes. I'm like, I feel like I, I'm doing, when I was 16, like I just said, I wrote in my, you know, journal, my yearbook, whatever it was, that I wanted to be a loan officer, and, I'm doing that now, and I feel like I I, I think I'm doing exactly what I want to be doing. You were, were you my young you self thought I don't know when I was 19, 20, whatever. Maybe I thought I wanted to go be a singer and do that stuff. But I do feel like I'm doing exactly what I have always wanted to be doing. For the record, she sings. <laughs> she does too. <laughs> Amazing voices. <laughs> In case you didn't know. <laughs> now, how about you? I don't. You know, I would say the only other thing we we do also we we lead worship and it. we love doing that. Yeah. I think it'd be really cool to tour and mm -hmm. and you know lead worship and I know that's something she would think would be really cool sometime but maybe one day I don't know. Be like, <laughs> Even just to you know to visit different churches, yeah. different ministries and get to just you know sing and yeah worship with people. Cool. You know what I found now that you said that before I go to the last question, um, there's something that said um, know who you are and they get paid for what you do, for who you are. Yeah. And I cool. think you've been there. You are there right now because you know who you are. And if you get paid for it, you're just getting paid for who you are. And what you want to be in the yeah. beginning, you know? That's cool. Last question. Is there a favorite book, music artist, or movie you love that you may not, uh, you may watch over and over again? Something that gets you fired up. My favorite music artist is Kim Walker. She's a worship leader, and I she gets me fired up, and I love her. And I I feel like Kim Walker. When Deidre says when Deidre <laughs> says tour, I'm like I just want to be like Kim Walker. Oh, <laughs> the worship leader like Kim Walker. So if you've never heard her, I would listen to her. Her music would get you fired up. She's awesome, awesome woman. Is there anything that gets you fired up, Deidre? <laughs> no. Uh, She's like, what? <laughs> you know, I used to, I used to have, I had a roommate, and we would always talk about okay, is today like a 
like an R&B day, you know, like do we need just like just chill music, or do you need some like Kirk Franklin, you know, like <laughs> do you need some gospel? Do you need to be told that you're gonna be like victorious today, you know? Yeah. So I would say like some type of, you know, um, I don't know, it's some like gospel. Sometimes I just need some gospel music in my life, or I'm gonna be told, hey, you got this. There's victory in Jesus. All right, the yeah. Uranus from Casey yeah. and JoJo to Kirk Franklin. <laughs> Yeah, why we're in the music choice. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you can say anything, I know that everything in our lives, especially when we're married, is team effort. If you can say anything, and this is a, a surprise question, to your husband, what would it be? Oh, I'm so thankful for my husband. <laughs> Kyle, I think you're awesome. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for keeping me balanced and sane. Me too. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For cutting our music whenever we need you to, for always being there for us with freedom, and for everything that we need, Kyle, you are amazing, and I love you so much, and I'm excited to um, do this new journey with you. I think you're going to be a great dad. Oh, all right, Stevie, <laughs> okay. it's your turn. Stevie, <laughs> you're up. Thank you for putting up with me for so many years. So many years. I feel like. Um, the Lord has taken us through some crazy adventures, ups and downs, and we've learned um, how to rely on Him in those times, and I'm so thankful for that. I couldn't love you any more than I do now, and you're an awesome dad. Thanks for um, just being willing to just hang out with Silas, to play with him. Sometimes when I'm not willing to hit the ball, you know, you always are, and I'm thankful for <laughs> that. It. And you're awesome, and I love you. If someone wanted to reach out to you for um, dance, where would they reach out? Where would they find you? Well, right now we're um, teaching our dance classes at Dancers Workshop. If you're looking for a studio, um, you can contact the office. There's some great classes offered yeah. there. Um, yeah, and if we're interested in um, Freedom Performing Arts Company, you can just contact Danielle or I personally. We have we do have a Facebook page, mm -hmm. um, Freedom Performing Arts Company, or you can you know either message us on our personal pages. Okay, and we'll go ahead and put that up on the news feed on the board, just so you have it. Okay, well thank you guys for joining us today. Thank you girls. Thank you girls thank are you. amazing. Oh. oh my god, I just want to squeeze that. I'm going to keep oh, them here in my house. Alright. <laughs> Bye guys, have an amazing Wednesday. Bye guys. See you next week. Bye.